Hello everyone. Today we are discussing problem C and D of Code Forces round 878. So first of all, the problem C is Sky Resort, and it basically says there is a math teacher at school. He was given n days for vacation, and he basically want to go to a ski resort. And to visit the ski resort, he needs at least k consecutive days for skiing. And one more requirement is there. or uh, rather say a constant is there that uh, in those uh, k consecutive days or or rather say at least k consecutive days every day should not have temperature greater than a uh, temperature given which is basically temperature q so it basically means if let's say there are k consecutive days or more than k consecutive days those consecutive days should be such that the temperature at any of the day should be smaller equal to the given temperature q which is the upper limit that's what is given in the problem so this is a basic problem and how i approached is it is i basically counted the consecutive days in which the temperature is smaller equal to the temperature given that is k and after counting that uh, those consecutive days uh, will only count in the answer if they are greater equal to the given k days if they are smaller than that we will simply skip that and count other uh, other consecutive k days such that the temperature in them is smaller equal to q now if we are able to find such a count i mean number of consecutive days which is greater equal to k then they will contribute let me let me show you on uh, whiteboard wait a second if let's say we f we have found five such days such that the teacher needs at least three days let's say three days for the skiing thing and all these five days and let's say q is uh something like five and all these five consecutive day or maybe something like eight maybe not to confuse with five uh, days as well so on the all of these five days have a temperature which is smaller equal to q so now we can see that we want to tell how many ways he can go for skiing so if let's say uh, these three days are first of all he select then he can go for these three days three days to skiing now these four days to skiing and th these five days to skiing so these are the three ways he can go to skiing if we choose if he chooses this th starting three first days as his answer or rather days and if he chooses these three days then he can go for these these three days and one more four days so initially we got three then we got two and if let's say uh, wait a second okay if let's say if he chooses these three days then this is the only option he can go with so the answer for this is one so i hope you understood now what is actually going on uh, with the consecutive k days oh sorry count of days and if the lower limit or the lower limit for which he must go for skiing is k then we simply have to find let's say let let me first of all make it simple if let's say k is 1 and the count of consecutive days let's say 5 then he can go for 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 up to up till 1 so which is nothing other than 5 into 6 by 2 but let's say had it been uh, k uh, apart from being 1 let k be 2 and count be same same 5 in that case he would have chosen first of all two days then he can add this much of days in it so for the first selection of two days he has basically four choices first of all the two days itself and three more choices here given and if he select uh, apart from that if he select uh, wait a second if he select these two days then he has two choices including this one so total three choices now wait a second yeah now if he select this two day these two days then he has just one choice including this one so this plus this is 
and if he chooses last two days then the, this is the only choice in that case he has just one choice so the answer would be 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 and if we observe that to make it a general formula if the count is uh, let's say c and t or let's say c and he needs at least k days for skiing then we basically means c minus k plus 1 times c minus k plus 2 divide by 2 this is the number of times he can go to skiing for a particular contiguous count of days so this is how we can calculate our answer for a particular section of contiguous days and we have to find every such section which has a count of greater or equal to k and we'll add them in our answer that's what it is all about let me show you my code for this problem okay so here i took the input uh, including the array now i took uh, count initially as zero now i have a loop i have a for loop and if i have a condition if ai is greater than q means there is a day in between which has temperature greater than q then we will check if the current count is greater or equal to q then we will add uh, in our answer this much as we discussed earlier and set our count to zero again else we will just increase the count and at the last we have this condition this inside condition again for the last count and then we printed our answer that's what it is all about the code now let us discuss about the problem d wooden toy festival so it basically since this problem says there are three covers or three basically the work doers you can say uh, who will make these toys or or in simple terms you have a array you have an array of size n and there uh, this basically array contains numbers and there are three people there are three people who will kind of process these numbers so you can assign all these three people some number let's say if if you are assigning for example in this case if you have array 17 uh, then you can assign these three uh, uh, carvers uh, individual numbers such that let's say i am assigning these carvers numbers 179 respectively then uh, these they can process each of these number accordingly any of them will process each of these number uh, accordingly what is this accordingly actually there is a rule the one who can process it in minimum time or uh, let's say minimum cost that person will process the given current uh, value in the array for example this one here it will be processed by the person given number one the first person since uh, and one more thing what is the cost here cost is this much you know the current number and the person processing it uh, the current number let's say is x and why is the person processing it so the absolute difference between that is the cost or time you can say so the person uh, here processing one is having number one so one minus one would be zero and these two sevens will be consecutively or simultaneously at individual terms will be processed by the person assigned a number seven so again the processing time will be seven minus seven that is zero and these three numbers individually be processed by the person with a number nine so again the processing time is nine minus nine nine zero so that's why the maximum such time is zero so we outputted that answer that maximum time so in this problem we have to minimize this maximum time for example here it is given uh, this five four two one thirty sixty this array here you can see in the explanation uh, the three uh, workers are assigned 3 30 and 60 and accordingly this will be processed by the one having number three again this will be processed by the one having three having three having three this will be processed by the person having 30 number and this will be processed by the person having 60 number so the maximum difference for the one with value 3 will be over here that is 3 minus 1 2 
here 3 minus 2 1 so maximum is still 2 and 3 minus 4 absolute of that I mean 3 minus 4 is again 1 so and 3 minus 5 is 2 so the maximum among all of these is just 2 so we outputted this answer 2 accordingly we have to process everything so my approach for this problem is a binary search and we will binary search on this maximum amount of time so why why we are doing a binary search what i observed over here is if let's say the maximum amount of time in which which is a minimum possible we are able to do our task or uh, the, those three workers are able to do the whole array or process the whole array let's say it is x then it can always be done in x plus one then we can have you know one of those worker will obviously be process uh, will be able to process it in x plus one time but for lower uh, numbers or the lower amount of time it is not sure but for the greater one it is sure that if every person means the three uh, carvers are able to process the whole array in this much of time then it is sure that they are able to process the whole array in the greater than that this time basically x plus one x plus two and whatever so there will be a point when obviously you can see uh, there will be a point when whole array in x time and at x minus one for i mean for x minus one they are unable to process the whole array so this would be our answer such minimum x would be our answer because obviously they can process the array for x plus one x plus two but we need this minimal answer so that's why we are uh, doing a binary search on this number x or the time we have discussed over here this basically time which we have to output so we can from this uh, we can see that that minimum time can be zero and what could be the maximum time maximum time could be the maximum number among the whole array minus the minimum number but we can take the maximum number uh, as the upper limit obviously now after doing a binary search the important thing is the predicate function which will basically return whether we are able to do uh, or, or process all this array in that much of maximum time or not so now our problem changes to something like if we are given an array and some time can we process all of these uh, like rather can these three carver process all these arrays such that they are fixed with three numbers accordingly and they they have to process all these arrays in that in maximum that much uh, uh, time which is assigned to them so that's what the problem is all about so let me let me further explain you with my code how i approached this problem so first of all i simply wrote down a binary search template here i took the input and i have this base case first of all if n is smaller equal to 3 or every number is same uh, remember i sorted the array here so if n is smaller equal to 3 or every number is same then we simply out uh, printed 0 and uh, continued from here now we have simple uh, binary search template uh, where l is 0 and r is max element minus 1 i took that as r and uh, here is mid then simply if uh, we are calcula calculating mid and if uh, this predicate is true we are doing r equal to mid otherwise we are going l equal to mid plus 1 and later on we are printing r now what is the predicate function here in predicate function we are having this time we are passing time as a parameter and the array as a parameter here we took x and z as the two person two of uh, like two of three person so we say that x uh, has a number assigned a0 plus tm and z has a number assigned a of n minus 1 minus tm so it is like we are doing the most optimal or the greedy thing here that we have assigned the first uh, person or the first carver a0 plus tm time the smallest plus tm tm here you can see that the it is the time that we are, have given in the binary search uh, function uh, or sorry rather binary search uh, loop so we have assigned this first person as a0 plus tm time and the other person or the second person as last or the maximum uh, value minus tm time 
now we have this two lr and rr function so what sorry sorry lr and rr parameters so now what we are basically doing we are simply having a for loop from starting up till n and we are f uh, like finding a number such that it is greater than x plus tm why since uh, this person can handle a not plus tm times uh, and then it is uh, really like it is quite sure then if one person is assigned let's say some number x and the maximum difference or the maximum absolute difference he can have in processing any number is tm then he can obviously process x minus tm as well as x plus tm this range he can process easily in that much of time that's why we uh, at the first time took a not plus tm as an uh, as the number assigned to the first guy and he can process x plus up to x plus tm but he cannot process further uh, i mean uh, you know the greater number than that so we are going to find a number ai which is greater than x plus tm and we will assign it to lr uh, the uh, parameter we have like uh, initiated over here so we are we will going to assign this lr equal to ai similarly we will uh, have this loop from last up till starting and again we will find an ai similarly on the similar similar ground which is smaller than z minus tm here z is the second person assigned this value so he can also uh, process the values up till z plus tm and z minus tm now since we are going backward to forward we are about to find like a number which is smaller than this number just smaller than this number if we are able to find that number then we will assign it to this rr and break out from the loop now if since this is the range this is the maximum range range we want to know see we are now basically able to find two range lr and rr or the a range basically now we want to find that can we assign the third person a number let's say let it be uh, something like p maybe p let it be p can we assign a uh, third person a number such that he can process this much of uh, elements in the array and this much of elements as well in the array such that the absolute difference would be smaller or equal to tm what does it mean it means that this lr plus tm should coincide with rr minus tm that's why in the code we simply returned lr plus tm greater or equal to rr minus tm if that is true then this return will return a true value which means we can do uh, we can like process the element in this tm amount of time otherwise if it if it is not possible then it will return false and it means we have to like assign some higher value of time that's how i approached this problem i hope you got the solution and if you do please like the video and subscribe to the channel thank you